And we're here with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Hitman 2. Uh, we got our hands on a review copy early from Warner Brothers, so we've had a lot of time with this one. And straight up, it's more Hitman, but it's really good. Full disclosure, here in the office, we're really, really big fans of the new gen style of Hitman gameplay and stuff. And this new trend of Hitman game is different, but also very good. It's wide open, it's vast, and it works hard to give you a lot to do. Hitman 2 feels really familiar, but it has one big change that shakes things up. The game is no longer episodic. 2016's Hitman game caused a bit of a stir by releasing episodically as a season one type of thing. New levels trickled out and allowed you to have plenty of time to like experiment and play with different modes to really get into the ins and outs of every intricately crafted level. Hitman 2 keeps that style of play, but gives it to you all at once. I think overall, that's a win for consumers, but I was still really worried about whether or not it would change up the flow or the feel or the dynamic of it all. After all, the episodic thing eventually won me over who was extremely skeptical of it, and my first thought was that now that Hitman 2 has all that corporate cash being published by Warner Brothers, uh, they were gonna go back on their ideas, however good or bad they may have been. Still, Hitman 2 feels completely cohesive. It feels like, like I said, more Hitman, but the package collected together here just makes it feel like it makes sense. I think with all this, I'm just speaking to fans of the previous game, so now let me speak a little more broadly. Hitman 2 is a stealth puzzle game. It toes a weird line between being a thinking man stealth game while also having some goofy artificial intelligence. It's a challenging game though, and that toes a weird line between trial and error and figuring stuff out or just going with the flow and improvising your way through. Uh, you can take this type of game as seriously or as unseriously as you want, and it rewards you in different ways. And that's what I love about it. You hear you get six massive maps, each with multiple targets in each to kill. Uh, it sounds small, but these can take you hours. Each target also has multiple different opportunities on how you take them, almost to the point where you will see entirely different areas and angles when you take a different approach next time. You can also have some choice over how the game guides you to these different kill opportunities. Also, if you're looking for more difficulty, opportunities do range from like disguising yourself as a tattoo artist and killing a dude with a knee to sneaking onto a Bollywood movie set, uh, sabotaging race cars, or just doing something more old-fashioned like dropping a chandelier on someone's head or finding the perfect sniper position. It's all kind of like save scumming the video game, and it totally freaking works. And what's kind of brilliant about the game's progression for you newcomers out there is that you essentially work and level your way up towards mastery of a map. Like, like I said, they all have drastically different approaches and you gotta check them all off and it gives you more ways to tackle an objective the next time. Like starting in a more advantageous location with a different disguise to just having better equipment. And that's a good way of giving a game that typically wouldn't have progression systems something to work towards that's totally satisfying. Plus the game gives you contracts once again, which essentially gives you crowdsource stuff to pull off in levels and elusive contracts, which I absolutely love. We're getting the first one soon with Sean Bean. Uh, these are special in-game events where you get one good chance to kill a new special target. And I, I hope it does as well as season one did because it's a good way to add free content to the game and give me new reasons to play. There's also the competitive multiplayer mode, Ghost Mode, which I didn't honestly have too much time to spend with. IO does say it's still a work in progress to be fair, but the idea of two assassins competing to get a better assassination works awesomely on paper. Then there's also Sniper Assassin Mode, which is fairly simple, but can be pretty challenging, and it acts as like a nice total change of pace if you want a game mode focused around sniping and just pulling off well thought out shots. I was actually surprised how in-depth it is and like how much of the budget they put behind it. It's pretty impressive. Oh, and plus if you own Hitman Season 1, you can load it and access it in this game, which makes some of the newer features available to it if you're behind, which is cool. Uh, there's also a lot of menus and stuff going on at first. It seems like a bit much, but once you're into the game, you get a fun one that embraces the absurdity of it all, even more than season one did. It feels something in line with like Hitman Blood Money and how it embraces the wacky, which I really freaking appreciate. I have two bits of criticism for the game. Number one, it's a bit glitchy and buggier than I expected. I got stuck in the environment twice and a few times random objects were floating around and doing weird things. Not the end of the world, but just worth mentioning. Some people are more sensitive to that stuff. Uh, the other is that the story is just, eh, I don't know. It's really the way the game is structured. It's not the main focus, and to me, that makes sense, but it doesn't make it any less of a letdown. Most cutscenes are just like these stylized moving images, and that's really it. It still does look pretty snazzy, and I found it more interesting than the last game, thanks to some stuff with Diana's Origins, 
but ultimately it seems forgettable and cast set aside. And like I said, as someone playing from the beginning, it's a little bit of a disappointment. Hitman games, their stories were always really straightforward, but they were still enjoyable. I'm looking at the original Hitman 2, Silent Assassin. I'm looking at contracts, stuff like that, you know? Can't compare them, but I guess you can. I don't know. But uh, that aside, ultimately, if you wanted more Hitman, just more Hitman gameplay, you got it. I get some people might take issue with the fact that gameplay-wise, it's not massively new from the previous game, but it's just more with a lot more stuff to play. Since there is so much to do, it doesn't bother me. It's damn fun. And honestly, I hope 47's adventures continue for a really long time. Plus the fact that IO Interactive sneaked a little Freedom Fighters reference into the game, uh, just that's the cherry on top, but that's a whole nother story. This is before you buy. You know how this works by now. I give you some pros, some cons, some personal opinion. And now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this game. Uh, let me know what you think of the fact that now it's not episodic. I'm sure most people are relieved. Uh, what's your favorite map? If you did get your hands on it early or if you're playing it soon, what are you looking forward to? Anything at all, hit us up down in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something, clicking the like button helps us out a ton. We appreciate it. And if you're new, you should consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out stuff every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Rico Delgado has been eliminated.